How's it going, everybody? We have Billy here from Upper Deck. Billy is here with us to talk about products, designs. I'll let Billy introduce himself and tell us a little bit about what he does at Upper Deck. Hey guys, my name is Billy Celio. I'm a senior product manager at Upper Deck. And my job is basically to build the structure of a set. Like um, you said design, I can talk about the designs, but I got a design team that's 10 <laughs> times better than me. Like I draw stick figures and stuff. <laughs> but uh, for the most part, um, I kind of decide, you know, how big the inserts are gonna be, how big the base set's gonna be, what kind of technology are we gonna use, um, you know, autographs, memorabilia, all that kind of stuff. I have to kind of put that all together, uh, put it into a costing, and then write a brief and tell everybody what their job is afterwards. Wow, no, that, that's super interesting actually. Yeah. Building the sets that eventually make it to collector's hands, right? Yeah. That, that's sort of my next question is, how long does that process take going from, let's say, an idea or a brainstorming session or planning all the way into actually getting the cards in people's hands? So what people don't understand a lot is it actually takes, it used to be about, you know, for a non-autograph set, it would be maybe nine months. Mm. Uh, for autograph sets, it was usually we kind of thought about 11 or 12 but it's actually increased uh, over the past years uh, with our vendors being so busy and everything happening that now just for a regular set without autographs it might take anywhere between 10 to 12 months wow. and a autograph set you know 12 to 14 months so it takes a lot of time it's not just like why can't you just do that i can print a card off at home well you can but yeah. Um, there's a lot of other things involved there that uh, we need to be able to print the stuff at vendors and whatnot. But as for like concepts, it's kind of funny. Um, you know, you, you just know what your next set's gonna be. Mm. So you kind of start thinking of ideas, but throughout the year, like if you were to go on my phone um, and I have a folder that just says card ideas and I'll see something and it might inspire me mm. and I'll be like, okay, this looks really cool. Um, like an example, I saw an image where it was just like uh, two different images, solid blue. So I'm like, that's kind of cool. So that's where the Dion's came from, was just me kind of scrolling through the internet and seeing something that I thought was cool and kind of wanted to um, use that in some sort of design for a card. Right. So when you're, when you're looking at new card designs, how much changes from set to set or from year to year? Is there a lot of change? Do you plan for a lot of change or do you try to keep it fairly consistent? I know we had a lot of changes with the new Upper Deck set. Um, is that something we're gonna see moving forward? So usually each set has their own kind of identity. Like it's, they're built a certain way or they're kind of expecting some sort of design. Like you're not expecting like a crazy color scheme to SPA. Yes. You know, you're gonna see an, an ultimate. You're gonna see like classic, you know, white background, you know, foil sort of stuff. And then, you know, series one or the flagship sets, you know, we really want to focus on the photos. Upper Deck is known for their photography. So, you know, we want to really capture unique photos uh, and maybe minimize the design, the amount of design element. And then when it, then if you want to do a bunch of design, like designs, that's where the inserts come into play. That's where, you know, you can kind of change some stuff up and use some different technologies. But like the base and the rookie autos and stuff, we try to stay consistent year to year. And when I say consistent, I don't mean the same design every year. I just mean the same kind of uh, technology, the same kind of design elements. Yeah, that makes sense. I'm gonna jump ahead a little bit in my questions because I had a really good question from an individual uh, on our Facebook page. And that was, she's a photographer and she was wondering, how do those images actually get chosen? I know you mentioned a little bit about those photos. So how do you guys choose which photos get taken or is there someone who goes to this specific game to get specific photos? Yep. It's, it's, really, it's really technical. We have this big dartboard uh, in the back and we just, no, um, <laughs> we, have, we, have, we have a photo department. It, it's its own department. You know, we have uh, someone in charge of, of getting guys, like we have people that shoot games for us. We'll say, hey, this guy's gonna debut. You better believe we had a few photographers <laughs> when uh, Pittsburgh played the Blackhawks the first right, game of the right. season. You know, we had a bunch of people there. We had a bunch of, and we'll get requests like, hey, we need these kind of images and stuff. Mm. For that game, it's just like, take as many pictures <laughs> yeah. as you can. Everything. But uh, 
you know, they'll, they'll give directions to specific photographers, and then we have, uh, you know, people that choose the photos, and then we have, like, the people that do, like, the color correction and all that stuff. It's actually a, a lengthy process to take one picture and then to what you finally see on the card. Um, a great example, like, Series 1, when we used to have new, sk or new skidding rookies in Series 1, mm. Um, people are like, why can't you do that now? Well, it's being printed in Italy and we have all that shipping time and stuff. What they don't understand is the way we were able to get it done in the past is for the two, first two weeks of the season, we went 24 hours, shit, like different shifts. Like the pre-press team wow. would work 24 hours. There'd be people there all day, all night, getting those rookie cards ready for series one. And now that you add that extra time, if you want the product out in November, we just, there's no time to do it. Yeah, there's no time. And it, it's interesting to see that perspective of it takes 10 to 12 months just to develop it, right? Then you also have the production of the cards. Then you have the shipping of the cards to collectors, release dates. Yeah. It's a long process. And it's interesting to see that you guys plan so far ahead for sets, right? Like, I'm sure you guys are even planning next year's sets already. Oh, yeah. Year. So 22-23 SB Game Muse is going to be coming out soon. Mm. I uh, just built... 24, 25 SB game use. Wow. So that can kind of give you an idea of, you know, it, we're a little bit behind still. Like, we're mm -hmm. catching up. Uh, as a lot of shops know, we're getting a lot of product out there. We're trying to catch up for you guys. Um, but, uh, you know, it's, it is frustrating when you're building a set and you don't know what the previous set is going to do. And sometimes right. you don't know what the two previous sets are going to do. So you just kind of have to, like know what might work or maybe talk to some consultants or just kind of mm. get a feel for what people are looking for from that product because like I said you haven't seen any results for a while yeah yeah that's it's interesting because yeah you don't know until it comes out where it's not even out yet and you got to build the next sets yeah so it's interesting I know some of you may know we had Billy part of our live stream recently Billy was asking questions you're ripping series one we love the new portraits design so we want to ask, what's your favorite design that you've done recently? My, my, favorite, des my favorite card that I've made, um, it, it's not as recent, but um, I love the Frameworks cards. Mm. I challenge anyone to show me a better looking one color jumbo jersey swatch. Don't think you can do it. Um, I, it it, it drives our design team crazy because they have to they have to go on the style guides and make every single one of those jerseys for the cards but yeah. i just think it's so cool it's literally just a jumbo jersey one color swatch and uh it like it looks like it's a framed jersey on the wall so that one is one of my uh is one of my all-time favorites i still have the mock-up of wow. me like i cut something out i drew i grabbed a piece of plastic and and all that i do love i do love the porch i love I love just challenging myself of mm. trying to figure out wh what are people gonna love about portraits <laughs> this year? And I, I say that with a lots of sarcasm. <laughs> yeah. I, I've said it many times, you know, uh, people keep saying get rid of the portraits and I keep saying, oh, get rid of him. I'm gonna, I'm gonna shove them down your throats even more. <laughs> yeah. And I'm gonna force you to like these eventually. Yeah. And uh, I think we did that with this. And then one of my all time favorites that never made it mm. is my, uh, my bacon wrap parallel. Bacon wrap So parallel. you know how they have all these weird parallels. So before the taco parallel or whatever came out, <laughs> yeah. I still think maybe they stole that from me because I, <laughs> they, they were in the room when I was talking about the bacon Ooh. parallel one time. Insider info. Yeah, but well, it was, it was at the Mint Collective. Mm. Um, I, I did a panel there and they're like, what were you never able to do that you wanted to do? I'm like, actually, <laughs> and it's literally like there's bacon on the front and then the whole back is like strips of bacon. It, it looks like it's yeah, bacon yeah. wrapped and they're like, it got all the way through design, and then they're like, you know there's kosher players in the league? Uh, and I wanted to be like, yeah, but, you know, you got to respect uh, stuff. So we, uh, we took it out of the, of the, of the design a group of parallels. But I think you got the below ice took the place of the okay. bacon wrap in this year's allure. That's pretty cool. I, I, I think... The way that the hobby's going with all the creativity, with inserts, is in a great direction. Even like you mentioned, like the taco cards or doing bacon cards. 
it, it's interesting to get somebody's perspective that's on the inside of Upper Deck doing those sets or helping with designs and seeing that there's all these creative minds behind making it better for collectors and, and making those sets as, as cool as possible, right? Yeah. So, super cool. It's, it's always a challenge to come up with new ideas. Mm. Um, the, the portraits, like you mentioned, that literally was from uh, two of my best friends. The wife got uh, her husband one of those, like, fake photos of him as a, as a, <laughs> as a king and stuff. Yeah. And then the next Christmas, she bought one for her daughter and for herself. So they were all up on the wall in their bathroom. And I'm um, like, that's hilarious. And I started Google searching that. And then you saw versions of it with dogs' heads mm -hmm. on the body. So I was just like, this would be, this should be the next portraits. And I, I paid the money to, mm -hmm. uh, to get that artwork done. Um, and uh, I think they're great. I actually, on the floor, uh, traded with a guy uh, to get the uh, Connor McDavid out of 25, the red, oh, wow. the red frame. Yeah, I'm like, you know what? This is one of my favorite sets I've built. Mm -hmm. I should have one of the premier cards from that set. So yeah, you, you got to have that in the set. Yeah, and uh, they'll be back for series two. Awesome. Yeah, that that was one of the other questions someone had: is what, what can we see the same, or what can we see different in series two? And how much you can say, I don't know, but what what do you see in that side of things? There's there's um. You know, there's new inserts in there. Mm. Uh, teacher's pet's gone. Sorry, guys. That was only a series one thing. But stuff like honor roll. And there, there are some sets that are built to, like, kind of start with, you know, veterans and then mm. some like holdover rookies. Yeah. And then the next version of it might have a lot more rookie content in it. Right. And uh, not that anyone cares about anything else in series two <laughs> except Connor Bedard's uh, yeah. young gun card. But I hope I made a... a, a compelling enough inserts and stuff for them to enjoy more cards. Um, I, I, I will say that uh, there's a jester in the, uh, the portraits this year That's that uh, cool. people might enjoy if you're from Philadelphia and uh, you like mascots. Ooh. So that should, be, that should be a fun one. But, you know, we had fun with it. And then the Fanimation is another one where we used original art and... Uh, you know, uh, you and I before this were discussing Funkos, and you know, I I, I built the Funko set for uh, the San Diego Comic Con, and then you see all this like big head artwork. I'm like, that'd be kind of fun to do for the next round of Fanimation. So um, that's where that came from. So it's it's always fun. I think Series Two will have uh, a lot of still cool inserts, a lot of carryover from Series One, with some with some new things that that are expected from series two like the fluorescence mm. design looks really cool for those i know those are back the uh, highlighters are back so um i think i think it'll go over quite well no that's awesome i'm, I'm a flyers fan so i'm going to be searching for that jester uh <laughs> that jester card for sure uh, i'm going to take some questions from uh, some of the individuals on our facebook group we asked them to ask questions um so i'm going to run through a couple of those here uh nothing too crazy but um so angela asked how long does it take a player to sign 999 Future Watch Auto cards? And uh, maybe maybe a second part of that, what player would be the fastest, if, if you know? I think our, our department has said that you can get about 750 uh, auto signed, but that's stickers. Mm. So cards, I probably would take a little bit off of that, but you know, they're sitting there and someone's moving the card and they're signing. So, you know, maybe 500. Uh, I'm just trying to do the math in the head, but uh, I would say maybe 500 they can get within an hour. So mm. okay, that's they get through that. I mean, if I was if I was a athlete, I'd be sitting there. I'm like, sign my autograph. There's a hot dog. Sign my autograph. <laughs> there's you know, <laughs> yeah. just my grocery list. Each thing I mm. sign, like boom, there's another one. Um, but yeah, I'd say probably between 500 and 750 is okay. what they can get through. Um, who's the fastest? I'm just trying to think of like. The most interesting, uh, that, like, you know, there's some, we, we tell them, please, you know, these are your cards, like, mm. take pride in what people are going to collect of yours, but there's still some guys that are just like, uh, it's like a mountain, or like. Yeah, we've seen those yeah. for sure, yeah. I, I think one of the most notorious, and I only say this because he's a Michigan State grad, is the Mo Ager was just kind of like a hump and a line. <laughs> yeah. Like I bet you he got about a thousand to twelve fifty uh, done in his hour. Yeah, when all, when all you got to put is a squiggly line that goes a lot quicker. Yeah, for sure. versus someone who like Bedard or Goretzky who's got that intricate auto that takes a little bit longer. Yeah, we we speak to our spokesman beforehand, mm. like make sure you know it looks good because you know you're representing 
a lot there with that autograph. Yeah, especially when you have kids collecting your cards. You, you want that card to be pristine. Right? Yeah, of course. Awesome. Okay, we will... Uh, I, we had a good question from Kian. He was saying, especially with you being the product design and, and some of the patches and stuff, is there a possibility that we see some of those, you know, rookie debut patches or veteran game patches included in some of those uh, hockey cards? Great question. Um, or different it's, uh, it's one, styles of stuff. It's one of those things. It's like, it's a great concept, great mm -hmm. idea. Um, do we want to do the exact same thing that someone else did? Probably not. Uh, but, you know, we have some things in store for the future that uh, we've acquired from players or from games and stuff. So we've, we've got some stuff that, uh, that should be good. But, you know, I can tell you as a, as a development right now, I haven't come up with it. I don't want to say come up with anything. Again, I just don't want to copy yeah. what they've done. Yeah. Um, if we get unique memorabilia, which we always do, we will definitely take advantage of it. And we have gotten some special memorabilia in the last month or so. So, you know, we might take advantage of that in, in some sets. Like, we're vigorously thinking of how we can use stuff. But, uh, you know, we'll see. I, I'm not going to say never, but as of yeah. now, I don't have, I, I haven't built anything like that. Yeah, and it's interesting to see that, you know, you guys are acquiring all this memorabilia that people might not know about, that they're going to be seeing in cards, you know, yeah. sometime in the future. Whatever that might be, right? Exactly. Awesome. All right. So the uh, the last question I have, we kind of touched on it a little bit a little bit before, but Mark asked, "What is the time frame to design each year's young guns, and how many people are involved in the entire process?" So, or the and, and if you could elaborate on the product design of something like Series One, I know we mentioned about ten to twelve months for each yeah, product. Yeah. So um, I'll give design. I'll give direction, now, sunny, and then oh, I, I give it to yeah. like. I have my brief, and then the designer, and we've had the same designer design it for a while. I think this last year is like the first time someone else has, someone new has designed it. But it's under the, it's a guy that's under the guy that's been designing it for years. He's just really busy. And when we get it, it'll then go to myself and, and my boss, Grant. And we kind of, yay, nay, you know, hey, maybe do this, maybe fix this a little bit. It's, it's not as, you want to know what's funny? Connor Bedard, the picture for Connor Bedard's young gun has more people involved in it than the actual <laughs> young gun design. And I, I think it gets, uh, the young gun does go, the design I think does go to our president. Like mm. he just wants to, you know, have a, a look at it also just to make sure it's, it's good. But uh, it's really kind of like a three man between the designer, myself, and my boss. Mm. And then a few other people get some final looks just to, to confirm, like, yeah, that's that's fine, but the Bedard Young Gun cover or uh, card, I think we had about like eight to ten people on that email. Wow! So it's down to two choices. Two choices. Okay. Uh, I think I'm gonna get outvoted, unfortunately, but okay. uh, they both look good. That's awesome. No, that's yeah. awesome. It, it's it's interesting to see how many people are involved just with the Connor Bedard, especially with how well he's doing. It's it's yeah. definitely worth it for sure. Now I will I will say that uh, the Connor Bedard canvas young gun that'll eventually come out that one i had a lot more say in mm, I, okay. I gave specific direction on that one that one's going to be pretty special but uh but the young gun itself we've got uh we've got a lot of people looking at it so when you guys hit the uh, canvas bedard you can thank billy for the great design there awesome all right so we got one last question and that question is a hard one okay what is the most interesting or your favorite piece of memorabilia or card in your own collection? Oh, jeez. It's a hard one. Are we talking sports or entertainment? Anything, or? anything. Man, I've got, so from a card standpoint, I'll do card and I'll do memorabilia. I have a, um, I have a card, uh, a Supreme Swatch. It's Steve Eiserman's All-Star Jersey one. And it's got a huge chunk of the NHL, lo like, oh, wow. it's not the shield, but yeah. they had like an NHL, hitting my mic, sorry if there was a big bang there for a <laughs> second, uh, an NHL shield, and like it's half, it's the shield, and I'm like, I traded, wow. uh, back in the day, I traded an Austin Matthews young gun for that. Wow. So this was, this was like his second year, or first year, but the guy's just like, you made me an offer I couldn't refuse. I'm like, this isn't my PC, I'll never get rid of this card. Um, I have, 
So I'm a huge How I Met Your Mother fan, mm. and I might own a screen-worn outfit of Robin Sparkles, who is a Canadian legend, uh, and it might be signed uh, wow. at, on the on the shirt. So I got that in person at the, I think it was the Captain America. Uh, I think it was Civil War, the Captain America Civil War premiere, mm. but I got her to sign, sign it there, wow. and uh, so I love that. And then I'm gonna do three now. Yeah. Um, so that's memorabilia. My favorite photo I have signed, and it took about two, three years to finish, is I have a full uh, Breaking Bad cast piece signed by everyone in the same color pen, wow. without crossing over each other, all in the white area of the cast picture, and. That's another one, like, I don't think you, you'll, you'll ever get out of my hands. It's, oh, that's, and super unique, too. Right? Yeah. Yep. That, that's, that's pretty cool. And a little bit of an insight into uh, what you collect. I collect a little bit of everything. Yep. Yeah. Everything Detroit, and then uh, throw some wrestling in there, <laughs> throw some uh, UFC, and then uh, I, I collect a lot of uh, entertainment stuff, too. That's awesome. Well, thanks, Billy, no for, uh, for talking to us today. We really appreciate it. Uh, everyone, thanks for watching. We'll do some more of these in the future as well. And uh, thanks, Billy, again for coming on. Did you guys cue the music to yeah, like, start I, right I guess, at the end? I guess we had the, the <laughs> outro music playing. No problem. Thanks again, Billy. Thanks.